This is a recording of the Southwick Public Library Board of Trustees. It is October 8th at 7 p.m. Can you hear me, Cindy and Tracy? Yes, okay. I can. Thank you. I think hopefully Tracy, I'm not Tracy, yeah, Cindy, the, the, um, hopefully it sounds better this time. The computer person did an update on the OWL, so hopefully the, the sound is a little better on your end. Yeah, so far so good. Okay, great. Okay, we are recording. We are not muted. We are good. Okay. So we don't have any public comments. Um, communication. Oh, yes. Yep. I'm sorry. My mind is clean tonight. <laughs> uh, so we will go around and introduce ourselves. So I've got Lynn Blair. We'll do in person first. Andrea Bunker. Yeah. Cindy Warner. And Tracy's trying to get off mute, but we have Tracy Mesoir as well. <laughs> okay. So we have the September, and I sent, um, I sent everything by email, so hopefully yeah. you guys can have it. Um, so... This is the monthly report for the department head meeting. I've just begun giving it to you guys as well. This is what we also hand out at the um, the monthly head meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that Tracy again? I don't know. Um, so basic quick summary, we finished July and August with over 6,000 circulations each month which is fantastic. I look back for as long as we've been in CW Mars, we've never gone over 6,000 a month. Um, and I don't have the data for from like before 2013, 2014. So, but I, I can't foresee that we've gone over 6,000 in the past as well. So that's a new record for us. So that's really good. Um, and then September, we finished with about 5,400, which is really good for a month, you know, the back to school month. So. We are very happy with that. Uh, I finished and submitted the action plan that you guys saw last month. I submitted it to the Board of Library Commissioners. Um, they approved it on September 16th, so that is all set. Uh, the CPC project for outdoor space is off to a good start. I have that on here, I'll discuss that later. Um, we've been sending staff to open houses with schools just to kind of interact with families and spread the word about what we do. Uh, we have a good lineup of programs planned for the fall. We have craft programs. Um, a woman is going to be leading a talk on homesteading in December, which is something different we're excited about. Um, we've got winter reading programs for adults and children. Um, we tend to do less events during the winter just because it's the weather is unpredictable. People tend not to not want to come out. So this is something that people can interact with from home. Um, the Board of Health Nurse is doing a food safety class, and she's also doing a Stop the Bleed class, which is almost full, so we decided to do another one. I think we decided on either March or April in 2025. Um, the teen librarian hosted, it was actually today, a financial literacy class um, with Westfield Bank for teens. I asked Tanya, I think she said that she saw four or five, which four or five teens for financial literacy is pretty good, yeah. <laughs> so we'll take it. Yeah. Um, and then the Friends of the Library annual meeting is October 16th at 530, and they're following that with a presentation. Dennis Picard, um, he is doing a presentation on New England legends and ghost stories, um, and they'll be starting their annual basket raffle sometime pretty soon. Um, galleries back up and running. We finally started working on a good lineup of people, so we have somebody up there now. I think we're booked through the end of the year. Um, maybe into 2025. So that's doing really well. Um, Paul is our reference librarian. He is working with Lisa, who's the new Council on Aging director, in order to promote some of our services like book delivery, memory care kits, um, and they've got some other things in the works. And she's been very responsive to all of his ideas and excited to see where that goes. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people have questions or, yeah. 
Oh yeah, we we go around the room and everybody does their their little spiel, so they they hear what we've got going on. Um, and then let's see, uh, new additions for the director's report. Um, our new bookshelf arrived. If you saw it, it's right by the public computers. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, I think it adds a real nice look out there compared to the the little wooden tables that we've had. Um, it's it's really nice um we decided to get another one just because it looks so nice people are really responding to the displays um so it it's been great um and then october 26th is the trunk or treat um the library will be handing out candy at the trunk or treat we are going as the adams family so we Last year was Ghostbusters. This year was Adam's family. We will never win the competition because the fire department always has like really cool stuff. But we try. We have a lot of fun. Yep, Wally Park. Um, it's like four thirty to six thirty. Um, so yeah, there's myself and two other staff will be there to hand out candy in costume. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Probably Wednesday. I think Mortish, Mortish has been claimed. Um, so I think I'm going to be Wednesday, which I'm okay with that. Um, and then that is it for my director's report or for the communications. Um, and then I have a minute. September. If anybody sees any corrections, typos, Anything like that. Just started in July. Always for the constitution. When he says, I don't know what to pay. Do we have any corrections for the minute? Anyone on the No, I didn't see any changes. It looked good to me. Okay, well then let's vote on the mic on right. Andrea I. Cindy I. Grayson. Tracy, I. So then I have eighty September statistics for everybody. Okay. Um. So September was still a really good month. Um. Like I said, we had over six thousand July and August. September still really good. We never do this good for, you know, the month where everybody's getting back to school and trying to learn all their new schedules. So mm -hmm. that was pretty fantastic. Um, you know, still really good on reference questions, uh, 37 new patrons, which is really good. Um, good computer use. So overall, a pretty busy month. Yeah, just looking at uh, Hoopla and Lizzie, it's up from a year ago. And yes. 
Yeah, Hoopla especially has really been getting some good usage lately. Which is which is good because I, I feel like I haven't marketed it as much as I should have. So people are still finding it and using it, which is fantastic. And then I'll give you as well our programs for September. So um, overall, pretty good attendance for programs. Um, children's room is is always busy with the activities that they do. Oh yeah. No, and I, I mean, I think we, we still have, you know, we did quite a lot for September. Um, you know, we had a, a bunch of good programs, so I'm pretty happy with it. I think the team members are Yes. Yeah, the, the, especially John gets a lot of people for the, the team hangouts. And basically all we do is just buy cookies and drinks and they play PlayStation. I was going to say Xbox. We have PlayStation. So, yeah. 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 There, I think one, there was one of them recently that he had like 15 kids, which is really good. Mm -hmm. we move on to old business. Um, yeah, so CPC project is still in the works. Um, I haven't heard back from the tree company about the cost for taking down the trees. I followed up with them earlier this week. Um, they'd be taking down two of the crab apple trees in the front to uh, make room for the project that we're doing. Um, hoping to hear back this week or I can check back in next week if we haven't heard anything yet. Um, so that's still going. And then I also, um, I sent the specifications of the items we're putting in out there, tables, the metal structures, um, to a guy who works for a cement company. And he's going to kind of paint it out, give us a price for what it would look like in the space. So that's kind of where we're at now with everything. Um, the capital project for the telephone system, they are supposed to be installing the system next Wednesday, which would be the 16th. Um, they may have to postpone it, but that's looking like it's going to be the date that it's going to be installed. Um, they're going to be training us on it on the 17th. And then tomorrow they're coming in because they need to install a firewall. Um, so that was an additional expense that wasn't included in the capital request, but it's only $100. So we're just going to cover it out of the state aid funds. Um, because if they recommend it, then we we do need it. So um, they're coming to do that tomorrow. And then hopefully by the end of next week, it will all be done. And unless they have to postpone and then we'll have new phones. So we're getting four stationary phones um, and then two cordless phones so that the staff can kind of answer and then walk around the building. So we don't have to put people on hold. <laughs> will you have an interruption in service? Yes. If if we do, it'll be brief. Um, it sounds like the installation will, they've got all the wiring done. All they really have to do is just plug things in. So if, and of course, you know, we'll, we'll post and advertise. I can't imagine that it would be longer than maybe an hour or two. I'm not a professional with these things, but I think everything's in place. They just need to hook them up. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yes, book drops. <laughs> the book drops. That's okay. That's okay. Um, they were supposed to be delivered, or they were supposed to start shipping on the nineteenth, which is why we wanted to make sure we got rid of the old ones before the new ones arrived. And then um, they were delayed. I called the company. I was because I was concerned that it, you know, was going to be delayed because of the strike and everything like that. But um, but they said, but they said no. They said no. But they're still delayed. Um, they were supposed to ship this week, 
and I'm just waiting. She said she's going to have an update for me pretty much any day. So hopefully soon. But so we, we definitely got rid of them sooner than we needed to. However, with my luck, you know, if I didn't ask maintenance to get rid of them, they would have shown up like the next day and then it would have been a bigger mess. So it seems to be fine right now. Patrons are very, patrons are actually more concerned that we got vandalized than actually missing the book drops, you know, so people are pretty good with, you know, coming in with their items. Nobody's been upset about it. What happened to the uh, Maintenance took them and I'm assuming to the transfer station, you know, wherever they would take larger items that they're disposing of. They were really in, in very poor shape. So there was, there was not much salvaging there. <laughs> I was in Springfield. I was like, oh, he's the worst in ours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, once, once, once they really started to move them, you could tell that they were in very bad shape. Some of the rust was, especially on the ones to the right of the door, was really bad. Um, so hopefully we'll have shiny new ones maybe next week. Um, I'm hopeful. <laughs> At this point, it's kind of out of our hands. You know, they're already gone. So we will just hope for the best. Um, as I said before, our action plan update approved by the MBLC uh, September 16th. I got ahead and posted it on our website at the last department head meeting. I also gave our new chief administrative officer a copy of our strategic plan, um, our latest action plan, um, and just so she had a copy of everything and she wanted some light reading. And then under new business, um, I have these are, the front is the policy, the back is the um, form. When we put in the uh, study spaces in the back corner, I'm sure you guys know, um, we were having everybody fill out, you know, the form just in case. I think we were afraid of, you know, something getting damaged or whatnot. People have been very good. Uh, we found that you know having people fill this out every time is a lot more cumbersome than it needs to be. So what I would propose for this policy is that you know we'll still have we'll still keep the policy for the use of the study meeting spaces, but then just I can remove where it asks us to fill out have patrons fill out the form if if the board approves of that. You know I'm just I'm suggesting this because I feel like this you know having people fill out the form is much too complicated you know i can just change the policy to say you know we'll remove the form no form is necessary but if they want to reserve a time just call us in advance type thing well you see the day-to-day -day in terms of what works in the first yeah form. yeah and i and i would say my opinion is that the form is is just i'm ending up with bunches and bunches of these people you know if people are frequent users of it they have to fill it out all the time it's become kind of an annoyance. Um, so I would, and I would say, you know, people have been very respectful of it. I think, we think we were kind of afraid of, you know, something being damaged. Nothing's been damaged. People are respectful. I would just recommend that we, um, that we get rid of the form. We'll keep the policy and then just ask people, you know, if they want to reserve, just call us ahead. In West Springfield, when you, user room they hold your card mm -hmm. do you do that yeah. we do not um i would be afraid of us you know forget if the patron doesn't ask for it back we may be we may forget to give it back to them mm -hmm. um so and I'm, I'm kind of against kind of holding any any property you know what i mean because oh, it's, it's a library oh yeah yep okay. yep um yeah so i mean that's that's my proposal, at least, just to make things a lot more streamlined at the desk. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have them fill out the form, the policy would still stand and be posted in some place. Oh, yeah, correct? absolutely. I mean, you know, there's the, the policy will, will stand as it is. You know, anybody who wants to use it, you know, call us in advance if they want to reserve it. No more than five people. You know, we can't accept reservations more than one month in advance type of thing. But it would just take out the need for having them to stop and, and fill out the form every time. Because, I mean, if, if something were to happen, you know, I think we have cameras. You know, staff usually knows who comes and goes. So.
I make a motion to approve this. And is this seconded? The motion is to approve removing the need for um, patrons to sign a document before using the reserve studies. Yes, is that right? yes, yes. We would just yep. edit the edit the policy to remove the need for for the document aspect. Okay, let's take the call. Michael, yes. Andrea, yes. Tracy, yes. Cindy, yes. Okay. And then um, Heather finished the financial report. So, Andrea, we, um, we I know I, I may have said this before, we do two reports every year that goes to the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Um, the one we do first, usually do, let me find the errors, so it's like September, yeah. um, is just basically all of our statistics, programs, building counts, how many people come and go, anything like that. Um, and then the financial report is where they basically ask us questions about our budget, make sure we meet our municipal appropriation requirement and all of the requirements by the state. Um, so Heather finished that report. Um, and that's just an Yep, yep, but we finished that. Um, we finished that. Michael signed it. Um, so that was submitted to the state. So then we will just wait to hear back of, for our state aid awards. Um, the other thing I was going to ask was um, the Civic Fund does the winter trees, which I think is a really nice thing, you know, if the library were to have a tree. My only question is, is how would we go about paying for it? Because um, you know, every, the other departments have nice trees where they, de they decorate, you know, we could do like library style decorations. I think in the past it's been about like $100. That's not crazy. That's it's that 100, you, yeah, and usually it's like $100. Um, but if we were to try to do it, we'd have to, with the accounting department, we'd have to get them to send us an invoice to try to get a check to then send to the civic fund. I'll Just, donate the money. I'll donate it and set it up for you guys. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I can let you know. Um, I can once I hear about it, I'll let you know how much it is. I think it's about like a hundred. We already have the tree in the basement. Um, we have two trees, so we have a tree already. Um, it's just the entry costs, but I think it's really nice to kind of you know get the library out. That's I think like police and fire do one too. So do one. Outside, I think inside is probably better for yeah, the decorations we would do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I'll follow up with you as soon as I get word that they're um they're looking for applications, and then we'll we'll do an inside one because I think we we did it years and years ago, and we may still have some decorations, but they are definitely not weatherproof. Um, and then, oh, I went I went right by the policy, the, well, the winter closing policy. It, I put it on here to review because um, I sent it to the new chief administrative officer just running by our procedures on how we close for winter weather um, to see if there was any change on how she wanted us to do things. And I didn't hear back. So I'll just table this until I hear again if we need to edit it in any way but i just put it on there just in case she got back to me and we needed to edit it and then the last thing we have on here is um to just start thinking ahead about our um budget proposal for january so in january we will get a packet from the accounting department where we have to submit everything for the budget we're going to request for the next fiscal year. Um, and just to kind of start the discussion so that I can keep it in mind as we're working towards that, because I like to try to get as many ducks in a row as possible before we get the form. Um, do we want, I, there? there's two avenues I'm I'm thinking. The past two or three years, I believe, we've tried to request to take one of our four part-time circulation staff um, who work 18 hours a week, give them more hours and 
last time we called it just the borrower services librarian so that they would kind of oversee the general circulation area. So all of the kind of front side stuff at the circulation desk. Um, so that's what we've asked for the past couple of years. Hasn't been successful. Um, and the other option would be trying to create to have like some type of on-call pool of staff, you know, that we could call in. However, with that, it's it's always feast or famine. We're either fully staffed or we're very understaffed. And, you know, it could go months of being perfectly fine and fully staffed and then all of a sudden short staffed. So there's no, it's not going to be anything that's predictable or. Are you kind of thinking of the quality hire somebody and say, you will work when we call you? Yeah. I, I don't think that will work. Well, yeah, see, that's my concern is that, you know, we never know, you know, so if somebody, they can't rely on it, you know, because it could be, oh, some hours here, and then for months, we don't need anybody. And so it's, like, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, and I, so, but I wanted to present both kind of things, what I was thinking of, um, I mean, we could always try again, and ask for the borrower services librarian to just see if we can I mean what is what is the board's thoughts on this I don't want I don't want to keep you know we keep throwing it out there and you know it doesn't get anywhere I mean we can keep trying I suggest kind of trying out because when I walk in the library it's four thirty or five o'clock I said is this the library director Running search ads and there's no one still there. So I mean, if nobody's on it, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten feedback as to why a uh, circulation librarian with more hours is not accepted? Why you don't get that? I mean, basically, the way the town operates is both the select board and the finance committee is you can't add any more staff or hours. If you're DPW, oh, you want another guy to drive a bulldozer down the transfer station? Okay. Oh, fire department, you want to go from two full timers to six? Okay. Oh, police, you want to go from eight police officers to 16? Okay. So, could you ask, does it work to ask? An 18 hour employee, hey, we're short staffed this or this week or next week or tomorrow. Can that 18 hour employee work extra hours? Oh, yeah. 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 As long as, um, yeah, they can do it, you know, sporadically. They can't, yeah, they can't do it for, you know, they, they, if there's like a sick call or somebody's on vacation and we need somebody or we need somebody unexpectedly, yeah, they can certainly work over the hours. Yeah, um, the the town of California state law said, Somebody works 19, I think it's 19 or 20 hours or more a week, then we've got to provide benefits. You people had somebody working more than 18 hours two weeks in the last three months. Is there a trend going up? You said, oh, like, no, or just yeah. so, so, so my other my other question is what else is needed to present to the select board that this is something that's necessary? How have we tried it for the past two years that it's been turned down? Does the whole entire board need to show up for a meeting in force to talk to the select board and, and try to push this through? Because you're right, if the DPW is getting everything that they possibly need and every other town office is getting everything that they need, why are they ignoring the needs of the library? I'm just out of mind. So one year, this is five or six years ago, on Saturday morning, meetings with uh, FinCon and Select Board. I can't remember if it was the town clerk or that's your boss or some department said, well, we need this because we get X number of people coming in per month. And oh, okay, so I can see why you're doing two more hours, you need another part time or whatever. So then we said, we're the only department in, in town government that gets over 3,000 people 
on the bottom. Well, if they're working, at, you get 3,000 people at the end of the month, it's at 37,000 for the year. So that's, oh, wow. You can do it a couple of same time people would then ask, so how do you know that we've got a conqueror on the front door? So we're counting the number of people coming to the door. Oh, you've got that technology? I mean, that was available in the radio shacks 50 years ago. I, I don't know. I think maybe the library trustee board needs to get cranky. Yeah, it, it's a, it never hurts. The same as if you look at the cultural council, they'll get three or four of their members to show up at their budget hearing. The, the um, senior center gets eight or ten senior citizens sitting in the back row and selecting them all. Oh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Oh, oh, you're here for the senior center. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so we will support you, Lynn. You let us know when you need us to be there, and we will support you. And I have no problem being cranky and, <laughs> and pushing the select board a little bit of the fact that, okay, we're here for the third year asking for this. It's not a huge ask. It's necessary. Our library is beloved in this town. You need to do something about it. Yeah, I mean, and we can we can compile the numbers, you know, to show that, you know, our circulations are strong, yeah. door counts are strong, um, program numbers are very strong. Um, and I think and I think when we ran the numbers last year to make we ran it to be an 18 hour position to I think we made it 29 and a half. The the increase was about 10 to 12 thousand yeah, dollars. So, yeah. Yeah. So which, you know, that ten to twelve thousand dollars, you know, is is another person out there to who who would would have a little bit more authority than what they do now to kind of handle some of you know the day to day problems that come up. Just to make sure you always have basically two people out there. One of them may be restocking material on the shelves if it's a quiet period, otherwise they will because people do ask questions, you know. Yeah. How, how do I get this kind of audio book? Or how do I get a um, food file? Or mm -hmm. look at my sign X, Y, Z. I mean, there's a lot more to it. Oh, you're yeah. yeah. interfacing with patrons. You've got to process all these books. You've got to get them in. You've got to order them. You've got ISBN numbers and things with broken spines. And I mean, there's a lot of work. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, okay. You're using volunteers for new books to come up to catalog. Yes. Some of that kind of stuff. Well, personally, I'm uh, a yeah, uh, rebel browser. Go ahead. What? <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, I'm excited to be a rebel browser. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> We're going to storm the castle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll keep. I'll keep you guys. Being nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you guys in the loop um, when we get the budget materials, and we'll usually be voting on it at our at our meeting in January. If they don't get it to us in time for our January meeting, we usually schedule like. All right, a, and then yeah, not put a it in. meeting, but okay, an extra an extra meeting put mid it, to like January. The, yeah, put it on the agenda yep. before you know the meeting with the select board. And we kind of plan our attack. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Then that's that's at least the direction we'll take. Okay. Perfect. That was um that was all I had for this meeting. Anyone okay. have anything else? And the next meeting actually when is is the next meeting gonna run into there's one there's one meeting that usually runs into something. Election. Election. Yeah, but, election. Yeah, but, we'll, but we'll be okay on the twelfth. I don't think there's anything. There's okay. there's one time a year where we run into something. I think that might be in the spring time. Yeah. Spring. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our meeting would our next meeting would be November twelfth. Okay. Who who is going on the nineteenth to the MLTA conference? I am. Um, that was Andrea. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> okay.
because I've signed up for it as well. So oh, that is Cindy. I'm happy to carpool, or I'm happy to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't mind driving if you. Um, I'm sure Lynn can give you all my contact information yeah. and. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would love that. I'm a newbie, and I just thought, oh, should probably go to this. So this this will be this will be my first foray in doing it as well. So we can fumble through it together. Super. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll send each of you an email tomorrow so that you guys can coordinate. Perfect, yeah. perfect, thank you. I appreciate the webinar that you sent. Oh, yes. Fans and that it was, was very interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully okay. you know, there's a good support system out there. Yes, absolutely. And I think we have a very good policy that we put into place a year or two ago, maybe it's been a year. Um, yeah. But Yep. Much more problem. Yeah. But we has, has the field finally stabilized or has finally found a lot. You know, I haven't I haven't heard anything. It's I, I don't see it's very weird. I don't hear anything from Connecticut. Across the state. Across the border, you know, even like I'll hear things from across the state, but like every we each have like our separate email lists. There should be like one that, you know. I think it was a couple of weeks ago he went on the OEOC website under jobs. All of a sudden it reappeared and revised as of, let's say, August or whatever it was. We reopened. We're still looking for a director and assistant coach. They had some problems last year with the local politicians were in California. Yeah, but I have not heard, heard any updates from them. All right, if, um, if nobody has anything else, then we will meet um, November 12th at 7 p.m. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Seconded. Cindy Warner, aye. Tracy Meswar, aye. All right, have a good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Good night.